So today, we will be dealing with the US military, again, and this time, it's a location I know all of you have been to. If not, what are you doing with your life? Note the strange, almost otherworldly head that is adored to the front of the building. Remind you of something? It should. This is Fort Hagen, located near the Boston Mayoral Shelter, Fiddler's Green, and the Mass Blood Clinic. It has many interesting things within, but it's those without we shall take a look at. First, down the left side of the building, we come to the parking lot. At first, it only serves to provide us with some rough information on how many people could have worked here. As you can see, there are many vehicles here, and some crates and boxes, but we shall get to their presence later. The bottom floor has one possible entrance to the building, but that doesn't interest us. This ramshackle setup over here does. This was the humble abode of a settler, a dead settler now. Eyes wide and lifeless. There are a lot of cams beside them, and they have a cam station. So I think an overdose is the most likely cause of death here. Next to the roof. We gain access via pre-war construction walkways. A lot of work seems to have been in the process of being completed for this building. Up here, one of the things being completed was maybe the turrets, though they could have been set up by Kellogg. There are two entrances up here. The one via the doors in the floor will be the one we use. However, first we have a corpse to look at. The corpse of this fine fellow on this part of the roof. A ladder and a toolkit are present, so it's clear they were a maintenance staff of some sort. The initial blast is the most likely cause of death, killing them while they were working on these fans. Funnily enough, this is not the only corpse by fans we shall find. Now, we take the roof access and enter the building proper. So when we enter, the first thing I want to talk about is this woman directly opposite us. She appears to have been doing paperwork of a sort, and is now dead. This is relevant as it tells us people here died right in the middle of work, or at least some did. The room next to her contains evidence that, as well as the car park, someone had also set up in here, and I don't think it was Kellogg. A cook fire and a sleeping matter here, though it appears the residence is long gone, and I don't think it was the settler downstairs. The hole in the wall leads to more desks, overlooked by the first of many shit paintings that were probably meant to be patriotic in some strange way. Some drink can also be found in the next room, which seems unprofessional, especially for a military fort. I would ask you all to observe a moment of silence for a fallen Nuka-Cola machine, taken for its time. The next room has a collapsed floor, which is odd as the roof is fine and the floor was reinforced concrete. This building has a lot wrong with it, structurally, in my opinion. The staircase takes us to the next floor, and there is a strange poster talking about nuclear holocaust. Just what a tired worker needs on a Monday morning. There is a protector on you can access here, if for no other reason, just to watch them die by synth paw. More shit paintings of unimportant arseholes can be found here, and it seems this room was once full of many objects of patriotic gobshite. Though, it is barren now, thank the gods. We can find more structural damage here, and I have no idea how it even happened in many cases. Some of it could have been Kellogg's doing, but I'm not really sure about the rest. Maybe just the bored arsehole who was here. Just in the next room over, through more holes, we find our first dead soldier, surrounded by advanced equipment. Now it looks like they died mid-work, possibly while performing a task on that machine and this one from looking at some files. But there they are, which makes the blast the likely culprit. The next room over has even more equipment in it, the most advanced we have thus far seen in this building. And of course, it's all shit to bed, and apart from the terminal to unlock the security door, is useless as. But it does tell us that this fort once had a higher purpose than just paperwork. The elevator takes us down, but we won't go there just yet. Out in the hallway, a small cupboard can be found to the right, from the drink and radio, it appears to have been a small setup for relaxing, perhaps this fort's equivalent to a water cooler, but with drink. Further down the hall, past the knacker protectron, we come to an interesting room on the left. It's the room below the one with the collapsed floor. As you can see, we can make an educated guess as to where exactly that floor ended up. Since these two bodies are more or less on top of the rubble, I'm going to say they were on the floor above, and died when it collapsed downwards. The adjoining room is row upon row of desks and cubbies, where people probably spent the majority of their work careers in, which is just a little depressing, 
The last one contains another soldier. Since we have found so many of them on this floor, perhaps here or lower is where the majority of them worked. A lone worker can be found dead next to this one. Dead in what appears to be a relaxation area of sorts, just as they appear to have been about to take their lunch. Through the next room, we come to a much larger one this time, with more open space. A single soldier is found dead down the back, beside a crate of explosives and a post-war chem station. The circuit board suggests that Kellogg may have been responsible. Once again, it could have been left over from another inhabitant. At the far end of this room are these machines. They don't bear any significance, but I would like to know what they are. They appear to be the machines that you look through paper records on, but I'm not sure. Now to take the stairs down again, we come to another soldier, and this death confuses me a bit. Given how deep this is underground and the amount of concrete present, they should have been safe from the blast. There are also a lot of files and cabinets here, and like I mentioned earlier, this is a common sight at this part, suggesting that it was still being set up. We find another dead maintenance man, once again by another part of the building that dealt with airflow. This is the second of this kind we found. The elevator is the one we saw in the room with all the equipment, so not much to say on it. A soldier is lying dead, bent over a crate of piping, almost certainly with their back broken to fuck. The presence of the piping is odd, as any such apparatus it would be related to should have been set up long ago. The room to the left of this has yet more signs of maintenance, construction, and supplies being moved about. It's all starting to seem like this part of the fort, at least down here, was not yet ready when the bombs hit. We next come to a security checkpoint of sorts, though going off the drink in their desk, I doubt they took their job very seriously, or they had a drink because everything went to shit. Down those stairs we come to another one as well, though this time it appears to have also been used to store belongings as such. Begs the question why both of them were required. As we head down these stairs, we come to yet more unboxed supplies, and a very suspicious looking plunger. Why would someone do this? Then we go to the end of the corridor, and enter the command center. So straight away we see two dead soldiers. What a joyous day. The one closest to us at first look seems to have died because of that rubble. However, they're lying on top of it, and seem to have worked in that room next to them. The other soldier's death is even more of a mystery. We do see some evidence down here that some people may have survived. But it wasn't these two I tells you. Right, so take a good look at that side. Now I have several things to say on this, as it appears some people did not adhere to it. So this appears to have been Central Command, the main hub of the base, and we shall get to that soon. The equipment along this side here is fucked, and you just know that beneath all that rubble, some poor bastard is crushed completely flat. Over by these banks of machinery, we find another poor sword. Now this death may not be explainable, but they were doing something with the filing or fucking about with the machinery there for some reason which means they too died during work. Also, look, smoking. Of course it could have been Kellogg, but he can't have been responsible for all the unprofessional behavior we have seen thus far. We then head through the doors next to that shop and come to a room full of bunk beds in the lift. This means that certain members of staff were either expected to sleep here or had the facilities to house them if need be. The next room looks like a locker or a shower room, which is odd as there is no shower present in the room though that is explained soon. At the end of the same hallway, a sinister looking lone plunger marks the restrooms. Inside one of the stalls, we find the naked, shattered remains of... someone? And they were playing blast radius, just to make their death more humorous. But why play it on the toilet? As for their death, well the toilet's fucked, so perhaps it exploded from the water pressure after the bombs hit? Also the showers weren't here, along with beer. Now, I doubt they would have gotten away with this pre-war, so this was either Kellogg, or some of them didn't die straight away. Following the stairs next to the restroom down, on the left, we come to this room, where I expect correspondence and information were gathered and passed on. Oddly enough, no one is here, which is odd as I would have expected someone to be working in this room, and thus dead here. Down the hall from that room is a generator room, and next door to it is a... Um, piping room? With another dead person? Near a fan. Right, I think we need to add fans and vents to our list of dangerous shit along with plungers. 
The medical bay, if you can even call it that, is found a little further on in. I hesitate to call it as such as it's... it's very small. I mean, most schools have a far larger room at their disposal and this was a military base. So this confuses me, especially if they were prepared to let people stay and live here. The kitchen is opposite that room and has two dead individuals. A woman halfway through a window and a man dead in a very... odd position on the table. Like seriously, how did that happen? The question of how they died is brought up again, as this facility should have been secure. The energy weapon bobblehead is found in this kitchen, though you'd be all pleased to know that I actually picked it up this time around. Now, this is getting pretty ridiculous. This small room is found just outside the cafeteria, and it contains another dead maintenance individual, by a fan. This is the third dead maintenance one and the fourth dead person near one. Okay, fair enough. The first one was outside, but still. Come on. The stairway leads us down a long corridor, and we eventually come to a residential area of sorts. So the armory is the first thing here, and we can rule out fighting as a cause of death down here. It might look a bit empty now, but that is only because I looted the bejesus out of it. If people were fighting, we would expect it to be more on the empty side. A fancy looking room is found next to it, with a double bed, TV, their own mini kitchen, etc. This was clearly the room of a higher up. Perhaps a general, or such. Once again, we find drink. Maybe Kellogg? Maybe not. A little further down, another room can be found. It clearly wasn't for as high up an individual as it's shared, but they didn't have bunks and they had their own washroom. So all in all, it can't have been that bad. The large room beyond this one seems to have been for broadcasts based on the camera and the patrioticness of the room, perhaps to link up after the bombs hit with other bases. It's also where Kellogg was sleeping most likely, or at least someone, in the Institute was. The last room is the real command center that we passed before. It has row upon row of the most advanced looking terminals that all seem to be inexplicably broken. Like, not just here, all across the Commonwealth. Perhaps it was intentional. The large map showing the world also highlights the importance of this room. It was probably meant to be a war room if things went tits up. Clearly, it did not work out. This is also one of the first chances we get to take a look at Institute technology. It's very... white. They also have more future looking ammo boxes and med packs. I think this might have been a holotape recorder of sorts or something. Not sure, yeah, okay. We'll look at them later. There's not really a lot to say at the minute and I'm not really sure what a lot of this stuff is. So forgive me. The terminal is a story related one, but what the hell. It confirms to us they took Sean, you know, that kid we're meant to be looking for, and that they're hunting someone called the Renegade, probably us. They cleared out Fort Hagen, which may explain where the people that set up here went. Also, you can find the Pipfall game by his terminal. Yay. So that was Fort Hagen. Its upper floors had what you would expect of a military base. Room upon room of records and documents, soldiers and patriotic rubbish. The building did suffer from a lot of structural damage as we saw. A strange amount of it for a secure military base. Kellogg set up here, as it seems did other people as well. One dead settler that we know of, and perhaps more that we did not. That leaves us with two questions. Was it finished? And how did they die? The base had a lot of work being done to it when the bombs hit. The lower levels still seemed to be in the process of being set up and stocked, with crates, toilets and piping being moved about. This could mean that it was not ready to support its population when the bombs hit, which may explain the deaths. The people on the higher levels? Sure, okay, they could have died, even though many people survived just fine after the bombs hit, but the ones far underground, underneath so much concrete and steel? Something doesn't add up. This was meant to be a military bunker, equipped to deal with this sort of thing. Maybe not forever, but for a while, and maybe it did. If we say the place was just understaffed at the time to explain why there were few bodies, many of the ones in the command center died doing work, so if the initial blast did not kill them, what did? I want to say they err, to be honest. So much work was done near fans and intakes and everyone near them was dead. It could be that the fans were not working properly, whatever filtration mechanisms they had in place could have been broken and pumped in toxic air into the base, killing everyone, which may explain why work was still being done in the fans. Or, maybe they just didn't die straight away, but ran out of supplies, and the lack of bodies is because many people left after the bombs hit. 
This could also explain some of the Drake and other lapses in discipline. They didn't give a fuck. We may never know. All I know right now is that, that head is creeping me the fuck out. An old military base and the corpses that inhabit it. I hope you liked this look at all of it. If you did like it, give the video a like. And if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go on to my subreddit so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon. Pound or a dollar, I ask for no more. If there are any rewards there you'd like to see but aren't, please message me and I will get back to you. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates, or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at nthapple.business at gmail.com, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.